I'm, I hope you are having a great JupyterCon. Our next speaker is uh, Steve Perls. He is a data uh, a scientific, sof scientific software developer, data scientist, researcher, and software product developer uh, rolled into one. He worked on executable books project and Thebe, and he's the CTO of Curve Notes. And today, he's going to work to talk about Thebe at Jupyter-based interactive computing to modern websites. Let's give. Steve, a round of applause, please. Great. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming along. And today I'm going to talk about uh, Phoebe. And Phoebe is a... Oh, just a second. By the way, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Just threw me off. Uh, Thebe is essentially a connector library for uh, Jupyter that allows uh, you to add Jupyter-backed interactivity into any, any web page. And over the last year, we've seen a whole bunch of development, which has uh, sort of split apart the original monolithic Thebe bundle in a number of sub-packages that makes it a lot more versatile and allows it to be used in a lot uh, different web contexts, not just on sort of static web pages. So, uh, by the way, this presentation today is built with JupyterLab Mist and JupyterLab Deck extensions. If you'd like to try building extensions like this directly, sorry, uh, presentations like, the dire like this directly in JupyterLab, check that out. Uh, in terms of running order, I'd like to spend the time uh, introducing what CB is, but then having a good look at the what CB can do, because it can do some quite different things and things that don't look anything like Jupyter. Uh, before then, for the second half, diving into CB and its sub-packages, looking at a little bit of code and talking a bit about the APIs available there, and just wrapping up with what's happening right now and, and what's next on, the, uh, on getting this release candidate out. So CB has been around for a while, and you might have heard of it because of uh, sort of Jupyter Books experimental live code feature. And uh, that's running sort of Thebe uh, eight point X, and Thebe's operation is, I guess, very opinionated. That bundle, you add it to your page, and what it does is it will find code cells, so it'll find pre blocks with a data executable attribute on it, uh, and turn those into code mirror editors. So this is a very simple demo that's up on uh, GitHub pages, and this demo is actually set up with to run uh, Jupyter Lite. Uh, there's a bit of styling on here, but it's basically a static web page. And if we look down, we've got like an ac activate button, a status button, and we've got a big code block that's just sitting in a pre block. So if I now go and hit activate, what that's done is that has scanned the web page, turned this now into a uh, interactive code block. So we've got a full code mirror instance in here. So we can put in something in there that's in Python. And we're going to see an error message when we execute it. Or we can just go ahead and fix that and say run. And then uh, it's going to run the code. And TB is responsible for also uh, attaching the outputs into your web page. So by default, TB will come along and attach outputs directly below the uh, directly below the uh, code block if it works. It is OK. It was just pulling in wheels. I guess the Wi-Fi is slow. Because uh, to start with, the Jupyter Lite instance needs to pull in some wheels for IPy widgets, et cetera. But then you have full sort of Python outputs. And this will support, I guess, uh, a whole bunch of uh, Jupyter-based outputs, including I IPy widgets that get loaded dynamically. Uh, so essentially, that's what Thebe is and what it has sort of always been. Uh, what's happened recently? is that uh, Thebe has been changed to allow you to do a whole bunch of, of different things. So what else can Thebe 0.9 sort of do? And one example is a scientific web application. So I'm going to play a video in a second. And this is uh, some work we were doing with uh, a group of researchers at the Doha School of Sustainability, Stanford, who wanted to create an application to be able to get the results of their research work out, but without exposing anybody to Jupyter Notebooks, even though all their research was done in Python and in Jupyter Notebooks. So we used Thebe in that project, and I'm just going to play this video. 
And what Thebe allowed us to do was to go and use a web application framework, and in this instance, uh, re uh, Remix and React, to build a sort of GIS-led application that gave them the ability to, for their users, their ability to go in, select areas in California, and pick up an EMS, an electromagnetic survey, pick up uh, data from uh, wells, ground uh, water quality measurements, and decide, pick an area to go and do a simulation on. And then when they requested a simulation, that would go and talk to a Jupyter hub, uh, start up a Jupyter instance, and then the rest of the application used Thebe uh, like this. And the application itself is powered by five notebooks that are maintained by the researchers. They update their notebooks, add them to the repo, and we're able to deploy updates easily for them. And then, in the application, we're able to selectively run those notebooks in sequence, and also just display selected outputs from those notebooks directly in the UI. So we don't expose any code, but every sort of cell with a Jupyter logo here is sort of a Jupyter output. And you can see the TQDM progress bars going. And the whole point of the application was to develop, deliver these research tools to the, uh, the engineers in, in the sort of water department, but only in the form of UIs. So once they've done the data loading, which was the first notebook, the second notebook then presents a full IPI widget-based UI to them that allows them to go in, interrogate data. So this was a really compelling way for the researchers to stay in Python, but deliver those research results out in a web application that could be used uh, uh, sort of in, in, in production as well, and not have to have anybody setting up a Python environment. So that's an example of uh, embedding Jupyter in a, in, in a very different web context to, to the way that, the, for example, Jupyter Lab stack is built. Thebe uses a whole bunch of the Jupyter Lab stack behind the scenes, but you don't have to build a Lumino application in order to be able to, to, to use it. Okay, so it's great. And some of the things built in there was like switching between pages, uh, refreshing the browser page, or even coming back after the fact to uh, start a session up if you'd sort of moved away from the computer for an hour, as long as that uh, Jupyter instance was running. The front end is able just to regain the session and reconnect. So, for example, browsing back to this view, you can still see the compute servers available, and you can go and resume a workflow. And you can build all the application features around something which is based on Jupyter uh, and, and then deliver it in a very different format. So that's one of the things very different from how Thebe has been used in the past that's possible now that we have uh, these sort of uh, core sub-packages available. Cool. Now, the second thing that uh, I wanted to show was interactive pa publications with, with MIST. And Franklin showed a little bit of this talk, and he, this in his talk the, this morning. But uh, in case you didn't see that, what we have here is a, a, a publication. This, so this is a, this is a paper. Uh, by by Rowan on uh, yeah, DC electromagnetics, and this paper is entirely published in a combination of MIST Markdown and uh, Jupyter notebooks. So this MIST Markdown document at the at the front is uh, is the full scientific paper, and then the rest of these uh, items here are notebooks. Now in the MIST front matter, we have Thebe enabled, and then we just sort of add a key to the misconfiguration file to say Thebe true to add this power button. And once we do, I'll just go to this one, then we're able to uh, connect to an, an instance. And in this instance, we're connecting to a local Jupyter server on this machine, but that can equally be binder. Uh, or if you do a little bit more of the plumbing work, that could equally be a, a Jupyter hub. Uh, if I press play on this, it executes all the notebook cells. And in this instance, we can see the entire notebook here. And then that adds outputs in and activates the IPy widget to make uh, possible this uh, interactive plot. Like so. And then, then we can change the settings and have the, uh, have the plot update. 
I think this one, things are a bit more visible. In terms of the, the figure changing. Yeah. Cool. So then we're, like, like everyone said, we're, sorry, like Frank said, we're able to embed compute directly in these uh, publications and hook them up to a Jupyter kernel. Equally, by just uh, changing the front matter to uh, Theb Lite, we currently have a PR that adds in Theb Lite here as well. And then provided that you have all your dependencies available, then you would be able to do this uh, completely in browser too. Okay, so that's two very different, uh, I guess, applications of Thebe. So I just want to dive a bit deeper into Thebe and its packages. So like I said, the current Thebe release that's uh, marked as latest is, is 8.2, and that's the sort of big JS browser bundle. It bundles jQuery and it also bundles Core Mirror, and it's going to do opinionated things on your web page. It's going to like try and scan the DOM and, and change pre-tags and, and things. So version 0.9 was a, was a big refactor to uh, separate out, to create a headless core library, and then put the, uh, the, put the functionality that was in the original TV back on top of that. So that looks uh, something like this. So there's now a package that you can install called uh, Thebe Core. That's pure TypeScript. So you're able to bring that package in uh, via NPM and use that in any TypeScript or any TypeScript uh, system, whether it's uh, sort of Angular, Vue, or, or React. Uh, on, sitting on top of that is Thebe. So we still publish the, uh, the browser bundle that's easy to add to a single page. And we also now provide Thebe React which is a set of React wrappers around Thebe Core, making it easy to put that into a, into a, a React application. So Thebe Lite sits off a little bit to the side, and it's an extension library. So at the moment, uh, you can add Thebe Lite to any of these by just sideloading it into your page. So just get the script on page, and then you basically just request the server to uh, connect to Jupyter Lite, and that will then flip and do everything in, in browser. And I can, I'll can i show another demo of that happening in a minute. Great, so turning, so Thebe on static web pages. So this is just like the original use case. And it's as simple as this, or this is the probably the, the minimal working example. You just uh, pull in the script, and traditionally a lot of people just pull that in from uh, unpackage. And you also pull in the styles. Thebe uh, has minimal styles, but also bundles in a bunch of the Jupyter Lab styles and a bunch of uh, and a bunch of IPy widget styles as well, so that all the uh, widgets and outputs will appear how you expect. How about that? Uh, and then you provide the config on page using this uh, this identify script tag here. And the the simplest way is just say use binder true, and then that will go out to the public binder service st with a with the default. A repo and start that up and and, and then you'll you'll be executing Thebe against that. And like I said, there's various demo and there's various demo applications available in the repo. So if you go uh, to the Thebe repo, the best way to start get started is to go in the apps folder and look at these three different demos. And now the simple demo, uh, which is the one we saw just earlier with with Jupyter Lite, if I scroll down to the bottom of the page here. There's a table which links off to all the sort of basic uh, examples. So I have a local server running here, so this should work as well. So these examples have been set up to be just very minimal. If I, with no styling, if I view page source, you can see this is a really brief example, but it's just showing you the bare basics of how to get uh, Thebe up and running. And in the different circumstances, it's exposing you to a bunch of the different settings that are available that allows you to customize uh, where it can go and look for for different for different uh, compute services. So for here, for example, this is running against my local Jupyter instance rather than Jupyter Lite. Uh, for Jupyter Lite, if I pop over there, press activate there and run there. That should do the same thing. Again, it takes a little bit for the wheels to load. But we'll come back to that. 
And then, so for activating Jupyter Lite, it's as simple as saying use binder false, use Jupyter Lite true. Once you've also just come in and loaded the uh, Phoebe Lite min package. So as soon as that's on page, doing that setting there allows you to, and it will pick the Jupyter Lite kernel. Now, Phoebe Lite also exposes uh, a Jupyter, uh, uh, the Jupyter config data. So this is the same way that uh, Jupyter Lab loads, and Jupyter Notebooks, I think, loads config data from the page, and that allows you to adjust any of the Jupyter Lite plugin settings, because that'll just be pushed straight into the, the Jupyter Lite server when it starts. So that gives you quite a lot of control. And like for here, we're telling it to go out and look online for the wheels, for Pip Lite and the Pyodide kernel, because I don't want to host those locally. So there's actually some integrate settings that you can go and do there. So that's the good starting place for uh, if you want to get started putting these things on on Jupyter Lite themselves. Sorry, on static web pages themselves. Is go off and and check the simple demos. Cool. Okay. So if I, if I just pop back to the presentation. Okay. So we've already talked about Jupyter and Pyodide via Phoebe Lite. One thing to notice is when you're working with that. There is a service worker involved. Jupyter Lite automatically installs a service worker in your page. So if you notice any weird effects, like you can't get rid of a page or something's yeah, something's not updating, it's because this is doing some pretty aggressive caching, uh, and there's a there's a service worker behind the scenes. So that's one thing to to bear in mind. Okay. So talk a bit about Phoebe and web applications, so going beyond the sort of static page usage. And Phoebe Core basically provides a whole bunch of runtime objects for you. So in Phoebe Core, in TypeScript, you've got uh, objects to represent a, a server and a session, and they basically hold a session manager and a kernel collection and have some convenience functions to help you manage those. There are Phoebe cells and Phoebe notebooks, which again is all sort of, they're packed with like, uh, convenience functions, so it's possible to bring in, uh, to create a Phoebe notebook from a, just a collection of source strings or from an IPIMB file, uh, and that th that gives you it also gives you a nice easy way to index into the notebook, even if there's code cells and uh, notebook cells intertwined, and there's also a Phoebe events object which mirrors the sort of original jQuery events API. And that allows you, gives you a callback based way to get uh, a hold of messages that come back from the kernel, which, which would other be, otherwise be happening uh, with, with signals, et cetera. Uh, there's a lot more to that, but uh, go and see the, there's some growing docs on the Phoebe Miss Tools site that, uh, that go into a lot more details on the core API. After that, uh, Phoebe React is a, is a, is a small package, but provides a bunch of key providers and hooks, making it really easy to get started with uh, with Phoebe. So you could you put this sort of hierarchical structure into place on your React site. So you have a core provider that can asynchronously load your libraries, then a server provider, a session provider, and then your page content. And then in this at this scope, that level there, you're able to go and uh, use various hooks to be able to bring in notebooks and, and execute those, et cetera, and get the contents of those out on your page. I'm just gonna show uh, one more demo here, which is the React demo that is in the, oh, my tabs are going, right? the React demo that is in the uh, repo. So this demo actually picks up, based on this little slug, uh, one of two notebooks from the, the build, uh, from the, the the sort of apps demo folder on, on the repo. So this one, widget test, you can see it's a notebook, it's got a couple of boring setup code cells, and then it's got three cells that produce IPy widgets. If I come over here and just press connect and run, that's running against a local uh, Jupyter instance, and you'll notice that we've no code cells on the page, there's no notebook on this page, but we are able to add the outputs alone on the page, and they, uh, they all sort of work, the widgets all work as expected. And the reason I'm able to do that is 
uh, through the tag system. So by default, the CB notebook object, uh, you can set it just to be able to uh, show widgets. So this cell is tagged with widget. If I take that off, take that off and resave the notebook. Come over here, I'll just refresh that. Ha, it's probably building. Refresh again. Right, I've got one output now. Now it's only picking up that one output cell tagged as, as widget. So this this means so this is one of the like the convenience methods on the Thebe notebook that just makes it really easy to sample and pick out of a very complex notebook the one or two key outputs that you want to get into your to your application. And equally, uh, if I just switch that to Thebe Lite, we can easily swap out the sort of kernel. And instead of hitting my local instance now, this will be hitting uh, setting up the Jupyter Lite server. And now this is all running in, in browser. So that's just a couple of the features that the Thebe Core API provides. There's more, including code in, uh, interpolation. So for example, if I come back here and decide I'm going to have uh, my const equal to 1 and then leave a comment and say that as a parameter, which is very similar to I think you get in Colab. Uh, Notebooks has an interface where you can define a preprocessor that takes care of all that uh, processing, allowing you to get variables into the notebook at, at runtime as, as well. Great. So that's a that's an overview of what you can do with uh, Thb Core. Great, and there and then summary. So Thb can add Jupyter back. To, uh, interactivity to static web pages. It can uh, still do that in the new release as well, and it's had a few upgrades in that re regard as well. But now we have the Thebe Core and Thebe React sub packages that allow us to use that headless connector far more flexibly. And we've got the Thebe Lite packages that now can be dropped in. Uh, that's currently, it's all powered by Jupyter Lite, but it's currently limited to the Pyodide kernel. Uh, but that is something that we can expand in, in future releases. Uh, in terms of activity right now, Thebe 0.9 is sort of a release candidate, and we're really looking for people to help test that uh, and, and use and get feedback on that main bundle available, as well as the sub packages are all released and also should be probably considered release candidate, but are definitely ready to, to use and, and play with. Great. And that's everything. All right. Thanks a lot, Steve. We have time for a few questions. Thanks, great talk. Uh, maybe uh, two questions, you could pick whichever one you want. Is it possible to switch the Thebe config live? So if I start in, in Thebe with, with a light kernel and then decide I want to connect to a regular one, and then the second question is uh, similar, is it possible to use the tag system to show and hide notebook cells for different applications? So a single notebook, but maybe multiple views of it. System, you can definitely hide individual cells. Multiple views of it, so it's the same notebook, but one is has, yes. maybe it has the code cells and then the other one doesn't. Right, I haven't done that yet, so no. Uh, but I would say that's if you're on the application side, you've got the source code available right. for that cell yeah. and exactly the same object that you're calling execute on. Okay. So you could, you could totally do that, yeah, even though it's not built in yet. Uh, all, and, and all tags and metadata will be exposed. So, you, yeah, so you, yeah, yeah, cool. All right, then let's uh, give Steve another round of applause.